fight and react slash next.js front end WordPress back end best discovery ever. Best discovery ever. And I've been in, in the rabbit hole. When I go into a rabbit hole, I go into a rabbit hole. I wanna see what's possible, what we can do, what the limitations are. And that's exactly what I've been doing. So I've made a few videos on creating your site in Lovable. In fact, this site wasn't even made in Lovable. It was an, it was an experience, uh, experience, an experiment with open Lovable. So I don't know if you know, but Firecrawl have made an open source version of Lovable. I would pull it up, but I'm gonna have to uh, go into cursor and then and find the folder and run it and all of that stuff because it, it runs in a container. It's kind of like when um, Bolt.new, before they had their official open source one, I'm not sure what they're doing with it now, but Bolt.new had, I've forgotten his name, but he created, so I think it was called Otto, he created a Bolt.new open source GitHub version that you could spin up on your own, but you had to have Docker running and it was a whole learning curve. It was really good, but it wasn't Bolt.new. Open Lovable is the same. I will do a video on it. It's very good, but it's not lovable. So all the fun things that Lovable has, it doesn't have just yet. I suspect they will keep building on it. It's functional. You can, you have to use your own API. So you, you figure out whether that makes sense to you. If it makes sense, if it's cheaper and it works out cheaper. But what I like is you just give it a URL and it clones it. So I gave it, I think it was, I gave it a, an author kind of site. I think it was actually, I've forgotten the name now, Ingram Spark, possibly. Um, I just didn't have an idea. I think like the first one I gave it was a Nike, Nike.com. It was done really well. Of course, it doesn't copy everything, every element, but it captures the theme and then you can kind of direct it. So tested it, it worked and I just ran with it. Wanted to experiment some more with the headless stuff. And I've actually, what I've done in the past was Vite and React, headless CMS to set it up to see how it worked. But it wasn't a site that, it wasn't a tool. So I've never connected a SaaS to a WordPress backend. So if you don't know, you don't need to connect to Superbase. You don't need Firebase, you don't need Superbase. You can have your WordPress. I would say not to have it on, not to have it on like a shared hosting. So I've done it with Namecheap. So I've had the front end on Netlify. And then, because you can just have so many, you can have, I think, I don't know if there's a limit to how many sites you can have on Netlify, but it's based on how many minutes, how many upload or build minutes or something like that. So push the front end on Netlify. And then I had the back end on my shared hosting on a WordPress site, and that was fine. But then when you want to SSH, FTP into things, you can, but there are some limitations. So I would say to host your WordPress installation on a server, so something like Cloudways, where it's just the back end, and you can scale up when need be. And you can't do that with shared hosting. So host it somewhere, that you have full access, full control, and you can scale up the server if you're planning on building the SaaS, uh, Vite and React front end, and then the back end with WordPress. So I'm gonna show what that looks like. This is the back end, it's just normal WordPress. And if I go to visit the site, it's just got my blog, my blog content. So I upload my blogs in WordPress, and then they show up on the front end here. So however you design your blogs, however you design your single post um, page, it's going to look like this. So all it does is using the API to pull this information in. So I'm not having to get the AI to create these pages. Everything I add to WordPress, it has the category structure that I want. It has the URLs that I want. And if I change them in WordPress, it changes it on the front end. So you get to design everything, the sidebar, um, the featured image, the way it looks, the metadata, how it shows up, and that's the template. So you don't have to create templates. You created that page, how it looks. You've got your related articles. Again, this is based on what I've told it from what's in WordPress, it's gonna show, show up. So I don't have to update this. So everything that I do on this site from a content perspective 
is being uploaded in real time anytime I add a post. So if I need to add a featured image, I do that in WordPress, it shows up immediately. This works because if you, once you've built the site, you don't have to worry about the theme. You've built the site exactly how you want it and you want to be able to just manage the content so you don't need to change anything else. So again, if you've built a SaaS business, go over to dashboard, if you've built a SaaS business and you want to have the SaaS and have people sign up and all of that stuff, you can do that and you're using WordPress as the back end. So somebody asked in a previous video, they asked how, how, does, how does it affect, how does having WordPress affect Superbase and Stripe? It doesn't, it doesn't have to. So you don't even need Superbase, well you need, yeah, you don't need Superbase if you have it connected with Stripe, you have two options. You can have it connected by Stripe with the webhooks and all of that and do it manually yourself, or you could use a plugin and let it use the WordPress backend to manage all of that. I've done both and I prefer to set up Stripe in the way that you normally would. So let me log out and I'll go back over to the home page. And if I go start, I have to sign up. So this is all, this is not the WordPress sign up. And this is a little trick if you don't know this. You can just prepend your email address with plus and it treats it as a different email address but it still gets sent over to yours. This is actually a technique to, I'm gonna go off a bit here but I think it's useful if you don't know about it. This is a technique to find out if people are selling your information. So it, let's say you sign up to some service with Sky and you put Sky plus and then your email address. If somebody else then sends to that email address that is not the company that you signed up with then you know that that company sold your details so i always use that i use it when i'm doing various things i just want them to come to the same email address just for ease but yeah just something to keep in mind all right so i'm going to do a password and you're going to see it's going to sign in failed oh i tried to sign in i need to sign up Let's do that again all right so now I'm signed up, I'm signed up. I can go over to the dashboard. I've got a free account at the moment, but now if I want to upgrade, this is going to go straight to Stripe. This is not the WordPress plugin Stripe. This is my backend setup. So it goes straight to Stripe. I'm in test mode, run through it. They get approved and then they can now use the tool. So authentication, all of the user accounts and user data, you can use WordPress in place of Superbase and have your content management system. So it's perfect. Now you might be thinking, okay, Ariel, that's all well and good, but how do we get this set up? And I want to be honest and say it's not, it can be straightforward depending on what you're building, but the more APIs and endpoints and webhooks that you need to mess around with, the more chances of cause issues and all kinds of stuff. Because you have to generate tokens for WordPress to talk to the front end, because again, they're on two different servers. The front end is being hosted on Netlify or um, Vercel or wherever you're hosting it, and the back end is being hosted on WordPress. And I've asked, I've tried to talk to the AI many times, I've tried to say, can't we just have them together? Can we just keep them in one place? But no, they're in two different places, um, and they need to be able to talk to each other or you're going to get cause issues and those are horrible issues. So how do you connect them? You create custom plugins for the things you need it to do. So again, you can create it in a way that you only have to worry about managing blog content, which is perfect, it's the easiest way to do it. But if you have a tool and you have various things that you need it to be able to relay back and forth, then you need to create custom plugins for that and they need to understand each other. And that's where the issues are going to arise. So the custom plugin that you create is going to need to handle the JWT secret and the REST API. And you can just use GraphQL, uh, you can use the, the REST API plugins that are available, there are many available, um, but if you if you have a custom build and there are various things that you want to connect You don't want to have a bunch of different plugins Then you can create the custom plugin to have them all connected So this means you can set it up to handle your stripe and connect to 
the Netlify version of your site, the front end to the back end. And you just need to do that with plugins. So again, you've got two ways that you can incorporate WordPress into your new wonderful React or Next.js builds. There are many things to consider with either option. For instance, you're not going to have cause issues with the Next.js conversion to WordPress PHP. You're not gonna have any cause issues. You're gonna have them all on the one server. It's just the theme and plugin set. Also not going to have client side rendering issues. So all of your pages, you don't have to worry about SEO and whatnot. With the Vite and React, and WordPress version, you might think that you're in the clear because your back end is in WordPress, but you're not. You will have to worry about CSR. There are workarounds, there are many workarounds. This site's pages have indexed just fine with a workaround, but the, there are things to consider. But if you wanna know how to do this, whether it is converting it to WordPress theme and plugin or having the headless CMS, um, via and React, Netlify front end and WordPress back end, I'm just finalizing the video walkthrough of how I made this site. The link is in the description, but if you have any questions, just drop them below and I'll do my best to respond.